Good morning. Nothing says Christmas like talking about marijuana, right? <laughs> and so News 9 story this week showed where that Oklahoma may be the number one producer anywhere of illegal black market marijuana. This problem seems to not go away. Yeah, I wish I could say that a lot of us were alarmed by that, uh, that we were a number one supplier of illegal marijuana. But look, the fact is, is we've had a very difficult time trying to regulate an industry that got passed by a state question and then had the legislature work year in and year out to try and clean up some of that. I'm not going to sit here on TV and say that we need to overregulate business in Oklahoma. I think we need the right regulation and right now we don't have the right regulation on the marijuana industry. We need to have more enforcement of the rules that are on the books. There are business owners that are doing the business the right way and they're getting pushed out by illegal operators and that just should not happen in the state of Oklahoma. Okay, the OBNDD, they're just up to their eyeballs in this. You've been working diligently on this for a long time, but the question is, is are we ever going to get a handle on this? Well, well I am going to say we need to have more regulations on marijuana. I've said it every year, and I'm going to continue to say it. I hope people start looking at the regulatory bills that for some reason die in the Oklahoma legislature. It doesn't make any sense. In the state of Colorado, in order to get your medical marijuana license, to, in order to grow, it's about four to six pages worth of information. Oklahoma, it's two. We got a bill to fix that last year and it didn't get passed. It needs to get passed this year. OMMA is doing a great job. It should have been its own standalone agency when I first ran that bill three years ago, but I'm glad we passed it last year and we need to do something to continue to enforce And You're right. gonna see some bills I'm gonna run to help OBNDD do their job, but the, the legitimate people in the industry are begging for us to do more. Well, by the way, OBNDD is the best law enforcement agency in the world, okay? Just <laughs> uh, editorial opinion right there. My thoughts are with workforce development. A lot of people went into the, legally went into the medical marijuana industry, but you've been working on workforce development. What do you see coming next year? We have, here's what I would like to see. This time last year, we were talking an awful lot about how we need to change the way we do higher ed in the state of Oklahoma. We have a brand new chancellor of higher education, a, a great chairman of the uh, higher education board, uh, former speaker Jeff Hickman. There was a lot of talk that they were gonna change the way we fund higher education, which is, by the way, is all constitutional. They do that to start funding degree programs that we need. Nursing, engineers, teachers. Now's the time to get that done. Now's the time to make sure next year we do that. I think with those promises, if they're kept, which they were made last year, we then need to put more money in higher education to continue to have that workforce development. But we've got to break down those silos and we need to start funding the degree programs that we desperately, desperately need for the workforce of tomorrow. All right, Dr. Dunnington, you know higher ed as few people do. Your thoughts about where we're going on this? Yeah, well, workforce development in general, I can tell you one thing that's never brought a single job to the state of Oklahoma, and that's culture wars. We've got to get off the culture wars and focus on the things that will actually help us here in the state of Oklahoma. First things first we can do on workforce development is make sure that we make childcare affordable. If you want people to have access to the jobs that businesses need, make sure they can afford the childcare uh, for the children that, that they're raising for the workforce. Second of all, invest in education, but do it in a way that is getting us the jobs that we have right now and the jobs that we want 10 years from now. We can make proper investment in education that will help our workforce. We take care of the childcare issue, get rid of the culture wars, we're on our way. All right, speaking of education, when we come back, we'll be talking about that and tax reform. Continuing our conversation about things that are going to be in the stocking this the coming up Christmas for next year, you guys have worked a lot on modernization over the years. One of those items is the education system. Now, this is a big topic to do in just a few minutes, but your thoughts about next year and education. Well, we have a lot we need to get done next year in education. Uh, part of that is funding. We just had a report from the LOFT committee, that's the Legislative Office of Fiscal Transparency, talking a little bit about how we do educator health insurance. Uh, we're the best in the nation if you're a single teacher. We're the worst if you're a teacher with families. Uh, I'll be running some bills next year to try to fix that. We've got to continue to high quality teachers. And then I think parental choice is going to be a huge issue next year. We're going to look at a way to come up with a parental choice policy that's going to work in all of Oklahoma. But the citizens voted on that issue uh, with the election of Kevin Stitt and Ryan Walters. And I think those are going to be two big issues. But we can fund education and give parents more choice. Nobody's going to make me make a Hobson's choice of two good things. All right, just speaking of modernization, without Loft, where would we be? I mean, it's a, what a great invention by the legislature and the governor a few years ago. Your thoughts about education, modernization, and where we're headed? 
Yeah, well, where we're headed needs to be up in the rankings. We continue to lag below almost every other state. We're at the bottom when it comes to education. We rank 48th, 49th every year. That's just not going to be acceptable. We talked about workforce development. We can't get to where we need to be in workforce if we don't fix education. We need to make the proper investment in this system so that it's here in the future. One of the things, we have to focus on teachers. We have a teacher shortage right now. We have a shortage not only of teachers in the classroom, but a pipeline of teachers. If we don't figure out how to get teachers into that pipeline and become high quality teachers, all the rest of this conversation is moot. Okay, and our last topic today is tax reform. We've heard the sparring between the House and the Senate and the governor and all these discussions about where to go with tax reform, but it'll be back on the table. Where are we headed? Yeah, I think we are definitely headed for some tax reform this upcoming session. This is what I would like to see. If we're going to cut taxes, if we're going to do tax reform, let's look at the entire system. Let's not just throw some things on the wall and see what sticks. That's not the way to do tax reform. We need to look at what revenue streams do we need now and what revenue streams do we need in the future. Once we figure those out, then we need to see how is the system equitable for everyone in the state of Oklahoma so that we're taxed at the right level for the things that we want. If we don't do that, then it'll just be willy-nilly tax reform, and in five years, we'll talk about how dumb it was that we did it the way we did. Okay, this is in your wheelhouse. Where are we going in uh, our next legislative session on tax reform? Well, I will say this. I agree with every word my colleague said, so long as it is not mumbo-jumbo to make sure you don't cut any taxes ever. Because I'm getting nervous at the Capitol. We keep talking about this, but then at the same time, it's, oh, we're going to be holistic, oh, we're going to be holistic, and then there's no plan. So here's a plan that I think we should go out and do. We should get rid of the sales tax on groceries. We need to do that. We need to look at a small cut to our income tax, and then we need to rearrange what things we pay sales taxes on with the holistic approach. But we need to give citizens more of their money back next session. That is an absolute necessity Hot because of good fiscal transparency, highest, sales, uh, highest savings in history. But it's time to give citizens some of their money back and stop saving it for them. Oh, it's going to be a fun session. Thanks for watching Your Vote Counts. See us again at news9.com. Follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Thomas.